and let us all that we can to build a better future. Now we have to move on now to a breaking story, and this is something that um, I'm very happy about. Yeah. In uh, the 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 British in the British courts right now, and as it stands, um, and again, this is this is this again. The story's still developing, so we're not over yet. But Judge Vanessa uh, Barrister of the Westminster Magistrates Court on Monday described the conditions the conditions that Julian would face in the U.S. United States uh, would be harsh, even compared to London's notorious maximum security Belmarsh Jail. So uh, she has basically stated that Julian will not be extradited and that his mental health would deteriorate, causing him to commit suicide if he was put in a U.S. maximum security prison. We got a couple of videos. Uh, can we have it focused? Uh, and let's let's uh, get that video uh, first played up. Um, again, this is breaking news. It's not over yet until Julian is with his immediate family. But there is some hope for freedom of speech. Let's play this video. Morning. A UK judge has ruled that the United States cannot extradite WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange to face espionage charges in a Virginia court. Assange, of course, was charged with 17 counts of espionage for leaking hundreds of thousands of classified military documents nearly a decade ago. Keir Simmons is in London with more on this breaking story. Keir, surprise, surprise. I don't know what this means. Explain this to us. <laughs> he's not going to face trial in the United States, he but he's still in prison problem. in the UK. Yeah, I mean, look, this is a bitter fight with the U.S. government, between the U.S. government and, and Julian Assange uh, and his his team, if you like, Steph. And you could say that he's won a crucial round. He hasn't won the whole match, if you like. Uh, the U.S. government, the DOJ, already now saying uh, that it plans to appeal uh, this decision, saying that in this judgment by this uh, British court, it, it won on the case of that it could offer a fair trial. It, it won on the case that it should uh, be able to try him, but it simply lost. And, and the judge said this because, and this is pretty extraordinary, uh, the British judge argued uh, that Julian Assange's mental health would not be protected in an American prison, uh, to put it simply, and she put it in, in these stark terms, that she couldn't be sure that he wouldn't be able to commit suicide uh, in uh, an American prison. So that was the grounds uh, that his, uh, the extradition was, was rejected. He is still in a British prison, uh, and he may stay there, uh, waiting uh, for uh, that appeal uh, to take place. But, you know, Steph, this is a blow to the American intelligence communities. Many people in the intelligence community will feel that, uh, and certainly to the Trump administration, which chose to pursue Julian Assange where the Obama administration did not. And it's an extraordinary turn in, in a story you'll remember, as you mentioned, going right back 10 years where uh, he and WikiLeaks revealed a, a Ministry of Defense documents uh, that uh, showed uh, uh, all kinds of issues uh, with the Iraq and Afghanistan war, in many ways shifted American opinion, but then over time was accused by Sweden of, of rape. He, he hid in the Ecuadorian embassy for seven years after that seven accusation years. and now is facing this latest court battle. So, so quite a story. And not living as a free man in the UK. Reminder, he... Okay, so again, real quick, I, I want to give a shout out to our audience just how smart you guys are. Again, thank you for correcting that pundit up there. Julian Assange didn't leak anything. He uh, published. There is a fundamental difference between leaking information out and uh, publishing information out. Julian Assange is a journalist. Man, why can't they just have our audience as their editors? It would just work much better for them. Let's go ahead and play the next video. Uh, I want to cleanse everyone's mind with someone who actually understands this case better than anyone else. Shout out to Taylor Hudak. Let's play this short we video. We worked with a few times on this. Topic. Yes, we. I, and I'm. I'm trying to get her back on the show. Her schedule's. In, but I'm, it's. It's a work in progress, folks. But let's play this video. Hi everyone. It's Taylor Hudak with Activism Munich. We have been following the Julian Assange case very closely, and today the judge has ruled against extradition to the United States, which is a significant development in the case. Judge Baratzer cited Assange's mental health and the horrific prison conditions he would face in the U.S. While this is a major victory in the case, the fight is not over until Assange is set free and home with his family. Right now, he still remains in Belmarsh Prison, and the U.S. government is likely to appeal the judge's decision. The judge also failed to recognize that Assange has been targeted for his journalism. Additionally, considerations that this is an attack on press freedom 
was ignored by this judge and the UK government. So the fight must continue and the US government should be politely urged not to appeal this ruling. Hi everyone, it's okay, Taylor so Hudak with- now. now hold on, um, real quick. Uh, the next video is gonna be a little bit emotional. It is uh, Julian's partner. I just wanna remind everyone that he is a father and that he has not been with his family in 10 years. I don't care how tough any person who has a blue check mark or has a social media platform is. What he went through would break anyone. That's a will of iron. Freedom of speech was protected by his actions. The freedom of the press was protected by his actions. That man needs to go home now to his family. Simple as that. No more debate. No more conversation. I don't care if, oh no, what he did almost hurt the Democrats. Oh, I don't care. He's a journalist. The whole idea of a journalist is to hold those people in power accountable for their actions. And what happened to him is criminal. No one should go through that. And anyone who says, oh, I'm tough. I'm for freedom of speech. I, I, I believe in journalism. You couldn't do it. You couldn't go through what he went through. No one could. How dare, how, how dare our media and our politicians let this happen? Let's play this video from his partner. Again, it's emotional. It's not over yet. The fight isn't over yet. I had hoped that today would be the day that Julian would come home. Today is not that day, but that day will come soon. Yes. As long as Julian has to endure suffering in isolation as an unconvicted prisoner in Belmarsh Prison, and as long as our children continue to be bereft of their father's love and affection, we cannot celebrate. We will celebrate the day he comes home. Today is a victory for Julian. Today's victory is the first step towards justice in this case. We are pleased that the court has recognized the seriousness and inhumanity of what he has endured and what he faces. But let's not forget the indictment in the US has not been dropped. We are extremely concerned that the US government has decided to appeal this decision it continues to want to punish Julian and make him disappear into the deepest, darkest hole of the U.S. prison system for the rest of his life. That can never happen. We will never accept that journalism is a crime in this country or any other. Let's not forget that U.S. agents plotted to kill Julian on British soil. His British solicitors were deliberately targeted by name and their documents were stolen. Their illegal operations even targeted our six-month-old baby. It is sickening and it is also a threat to everyone. On behalf of Julian and myself, I want to thank the millions of people around the world and the institutions that are already calling for this persecution to end. I ask you all to shout louder, lobby harder, until he is free. I call on everyone else to come together to defend Julian's rights. Not just Julian's rights, they're your rights too. Yep. Julian's freedom is coupled to all our freedoms, and our freedoms are lost in the blink of an eye. I call on insiders to come forward to expose the full extent of the misconduct that has led to Julian's imprisonment. And I call on the President of the United States to end this now. It's not too late, Trump. You could do the right thing. Mr. Really President, tear down these prison walls. Let our little boys 
have their father. Yep. Free Julian. Free the press. Free us all. Couldn't agree more. Now, in this fight for his freedom, uh, very few people have been not speaking out. You know, um, you, know, and, you, know, and, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean look, look, really quick. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. And a lot of that is structural. Like we have not like the entire reason we created Rockfin for a, a huge part of it was we, we wanted to talk about him for a long time. But YouTube, why, I, you know, and if you know me behind the scenes, you probably don't know me behind the scenes. That's sort of the point of me being here. Um, I'm always like, I'm always the guy that's like, that's sort of what happened. We got shadow banned previously in for the summer months. for talking about stuff that YouTube didn't want us to talk about. So I've always been very careful since then to not do that. Of course, we're doing it today because it's a big development. We got to talk about it. And so we're going to take any risk we need to do to talk about it. But this is a lot on YouTube. This is a lot on other media where if you say his name, you can get... Uh, you can get demonetized if you mm -hmm. say it enough and enough shows you can get shadow banned so you can talk about julian of course you'll get half as many viewers 90 percent less money and the entire algorithm may just shut your channel down mm -hmm. but and that's it's it's a that's why we have rockfin that's rockfin's the place to go for free speech in america who thought so yep and rockfin has been an outstanding platform for us to talk about controversial statements check out our rockfin channel i want to address something here real quick too again shout out to uh other channels that have been doing the same work too and more than R us R I mean, honestly. richard Medhurst, Rich, richard medhurst taylor hooduck of activism munich she has been richard and uh, taylor were actually in london during the height of the trials yeah. uh during the summer um shout out to nico house Shout out to Steve Poikman and his crew. Shout out to Convo Couch, Craig, uh, Craig Pasta and Fiera Isabella. They've they're, been they're, talking, and they're yeah. all and they're all there in Washington, D.C. Uh, right now, at least protesting slash celebrating some of the good news. Now the fight isn't over yet, but larger networks like TYT, for example, when they said Anna would look into it, they only did kind of one segment and <coughs> yeah. just, just kind of, and, and you and you would think they speak be speaking yeah. out the loudest because, you know. It's it kind of impacts them too because if they ever want to do investigative journalism, well, they again, had their four horsemen. Now they got none. So oh, it's way not that now, big yeah, an so, yeah. So, so I guess it's not a big incentive. But you know, you would think progressives in Congress would also be speaking out too, like AOC or Bernie Sanders or Rashid Tlaib, Ayanna Presley. Ironically, Trump has talked about it. Trump has yeah. talked about him. Sarah yeah. Palin has even talked about him. But hold on, I just want to trigger, I guess, all those who uh, are upset at this person who's leaving. Only Representative Tulsi Gabbard, the Democrat, is the only one who really kind of gave a clear idea about why Julian Assange needs to be pardoned. Can we play that video of a uh, Tulsi? And so again, when people ask us, like there Every are still a few people that are like, guys, why do you like Tulsi? She has a lot of issues. Like, she does, but she also does stuff like this. Here we go. Let's play this. Every single one of us as Americans are guaranteed basic fundamental rights and freedoms that are enshrined in our constitution. But we cannot take these freedoms for granted. I've introduced legislation to stand up for and to protect brave whistleblowers who've come forward to expose illegal actions within our own government or egregious abuses of power and to All reform right. the Espionage Act to make sure that if a whistleblower is prosecuted under the Espionage Act, that they will have their fair day in court, something that is currently not allowable under the law as it stands today. So first I introduced HRS 1162 with my colleague, Congressman Matt Gates, that very simply calls on our government to drop all charges against Edward Snowden for the actions that he took in the public interest to expose a mass government surveillance program on all Americans that violates our privacy and civil liberties and that courts deemed illegal more than once. I also introduced HRES uh, 1175 with my colleague, Congressman Tom Massey, which calls for the same action for the government to drop all charges against Julian Assange, who also acted in the pub uh, public interest as mm -hmm. he published information to expose lies and egregious abuses of power in our own government. Last but not least, I introduced a bill uh, HR right, let's, let's 845. Again. And, you know, the reason why I'm just bringing this up is because, you know, she was the only one in the Democratic Party who did anything or even truly acknowledged what would happen if Julian would be extradited here. Yeah. And so 
at, you know, she's leaving Congress, so it's done and over with. But at the end of the day, remember those who are silent. Remember those who chose not to talk about it. Remember those politicians who just chose to turn a blind eye because I guess it wasn't cool or I guess it wasn't smart or uh, you really they're, they're, they had to be more pragmatic. But when freedom of speech is at risk, you have to speak out. Daniel. Yeah, I, it's like we live at a time in an era not too distant from previous eras, like when this uh, Espionage was, Act was put into place. In 1917. Yeah, when, yeah, World War One was a thing. Um, this is what a failing empire does. It has and holds and hides secrets of abusing its own citizen, abusing its own power, and very much like a uh, hyped-up cop who is a bad cop or anything of that nature. In this country, in this, quote, great country that we live in, it's the worst crime that you can commit is exposing that mm -hmm. and embarrassing the nation. Julian Assange, he, the crime he really committed is not too dissimilar from a lot of the crimes that a lot of people get shot over with police. He embarrassed them. He said the U.S., Again, from documents that were given to him that he published, like any journalist would, he exposed the U.S. for spying on all of its citizens and exposed the intelligence community and exposed everything and everyone. And I remember there's a, there's a, there's a meme I used to have on my phone that I used to show people all the time when it was a little more topical that like every time Assange has uh, exposed something through publishing through WikiLeaks, it just depends on which side is happy. Was when it, it Democrat when, or Republican? It was, it's, it's, yeah, it's a Grind yeah. My Gears uh, one with, with Family yeah. Guy, right? Uh, like, it, like was, it, it was it, a uh, similar Peter. one to that, but that one works just as well. Yeah, it's like Peter so Griffin it's like, giving a thumbs up yeah, and getting angry. Yeah, and so it was the Grinding My Gears one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like when he does things that the Democrats like, the Democrats love him and they think he's great, and the Republicans hate him when he does something that the Republicans like, the Democrats. So it's all just politics. The Julian is in prison for being good at his job. That's what he's in jail for right now. That's really what he's in jail for is being good at his job. Snowden is in exile because he was patriotic and good at his job. Manning, good at their job. That's what this is. We're in an era that we, we like to make fun of all the Soviet Union, how anytime you embarrass them, they take you out, whereas we're now doing the same. So to Julian... If there is a day where you come out and you are free, I hope after recovery and time with your family, we can interview you because if there is a hero out there in journalism who has put everything they have on the line and then some, it's you. And he needs to come home and he needs to come home now. Uh, everyone should still be screaming from the rooftop. It's not over yet. The fight isn't over. It's okay to celebrate. And thank goodness. I mean, it wasn't the decision you know, the judge's decision, I wish she had a little bit more reasons, but I mean, she did point out it's just, just more than just, expected. Just, it, it, she did, she did point out, Hey, the U S prison system, <laughs> it's not all that great. <laughs> and, and not to mention, yeah. you know, it is such a high profile individual. You know, I could see something very suspicious happening, just like what happened in New York some time ago where this guy, I guess he somehow <laughs> killed himself, but yet, you know, there were cameras that turned off and two security guards were asleep at the same time. I, Probably a nothing burger, but maybe that judge thought, hold on, wait a minute. Julian might be in some danger. So, Julian, yeah. I'm glad that this is happening, but everyone who's watching this show right now, it isn't over yet. It isn't over yet. It's not over until that man is home with his partner and his children and that he could finally recover. <laughs> it's long overdue. He's got to yeah. come home. Enough. Yeah. He's suffered enough. He's been tortured enough. Okay? And guess what? He didn't break. What an inspiration to all journalists everywhere.